Anastanaria, the waiters, carrying out a tradition more than 2,000 years old, which originated in a village called Kosti in northeast Thrace. Every year on the 20th of May, the people of the village of Langada in Macedonia forget their daily cares. It's the day of their patron saint. They live for him alone, worship their icons, and pass into a religious frenzy. Fifteen miles northwest of Salonika, Langara is situated in a fertile plain. The town's 7,000 inhabitants, mostly peasants, live quietly. In earlier days, storks migrating north for the summer used to build their nests in Langada. But even here, modern civilization has overtaken nature. The graceful birds can't build their nests in television antennas. Langada has also taken in refugees from the 20th century Balkan Wars people from Asia Minor and Thrace. The town boasts 25 tailors. No one buys ready-made suits. Daily life is uncomplicated. A doctor treats the elderly wife of a farmer. A lawyer negotiates with peasant clients. A lot of the town's business is transacted in cafes or tavernas. Here, they play tavli, a kind of backgammon, solemnly watched over by a local priest. It's a serious matter. The prize may be a cup of sweet Greek coffee. The game came from Asia. It probably originated in Persia and was brought to Europe by the ancient Byzantines. To win, you need skill as well as a good measure of luck. Early on the morning of May 20th, the Anastanaria begin their preparations. Housewives prepare dough for their traditional cakes and take it to the local bakery. Primitive carts clatter slowly through the narrow streets between overhanging houses which are typical for the area. This farmer is the arch Anastanaris, the chief whaler. He follows in the footsteps of generations of male forebears. They are the leaders of the fire dance. His wife, the arch Anastanarissa, is also preparing for the dance. She came to Langada at 14, grew up here, married, and has brought up two sons. Their house is called the Konaki, the little nest. Normally, this is their bedroom, but on May 20th, it's a holy place, a shrine. Every year, the faithful gather here to carry on their tradition. Today, there are only about 20 families who participate. They come to the Konaki from neighboring villages for their celebration of Saint Constantine, bearing generations old icons, candles, incense, and holy gifts.
dusk, solemnly and piously, the arch Anastanarissa opens the ritual dance, holding a colored cloth. comes from a dauli, a drum, and from a lyre. These instruments have also been passed down from generation to generation, father to son. They are holy relics, never to be sold. This is the spiritual preparation for the fire dance, a pleading prayer. Worship, religious intoxication, and ecstatic dance serve to cleanse the soul and pave the way for a human approach to God. There's nothing special about this handful of people, simple, poor, young and aged, some illiterate. But on this evening, something extraordinary happens inside them, a change which lasts for three days. Sense smoke looms thicker in the Kanaki, rising heavenwards and carrying with it the souls of the worshippers. The wild tone of the drum, flickering candlelight, one thinks of a bacchanalian orgy. Orgy is reaching its peak. In the gloomy Kanaki, the dancers wail an ancient chant. This is why they are called the Anastanaria. Bacchus, the god of old, lives no longer. His place has been taken by Saint Constantine. Night passes today. Langara decks itself in flags. Hundreds of spectators are expected. It's a double holiday for the town, the Day of the Whalers, and the Orthodox Church name day of King Constantine of the Hellenes. The whalers are a product of the upheavals in the Balkans, which have been milestones in the 20th century. When Bulgaria took over East Rumeli in 1914, the Thracians were driven from their homes. Their villages and churches were destroyed. They fled to Greece, taking what possessions they could, above all their holy icons. For eight years, they wandered.
Only in 1922 did they find permanent asylum in Nangada. Here they were once again free to practice their ancient customs. The refugees from the village of Kosti remain to this day true to their fire dance. The mayor of Langara says, Formerly, this ceremony never took place in public. The outside world was not wanted. The Anastanaria did not want to make themselves objects of ridicule. The ceremony was for themselves alone. The purpose of the festival is to beg for fertile crops and good health in the year to come. The children of the whalers are modern. Their dress could be seen anywhere. They go to high school, study science or mathematics, but they still observe the ancient traditions. It's a sacred inheritance. It's hard to believe that this 20th century teenager forgets all her modern surroundings in the course of the ritual and hypnotically, blindly devotes herself to the patron saint. lady in the corner is the director of the ceremony. She has been running the progress of the dance from the same corner for decades. She transfers her own impassioned faith to her weaker followers. grow more intense. The dance progresses. Sweat bathes the brows of the dancers. The spell of total belief is almost complete. The son of the old woman carries an incense burner to the sacrificial spot. A young calf and three sheep are to be slaughtered. It's against the principles of the Orthodox Church, which holds that sacrifice is heathen. But the whalers are fanatic. Alone in a group and without a priest, they begin the benediction ritual. Now, icons are brought out from the Kanaki. The rhythmic monotone beat of the Dauli and the lyre accompanies the dancers who have moved into the courtyard.
the bigadi, the sacrificial calf, is led before the sacred pictures along with the sheep. The calf must be black and not more than three years old. It can never have borne a yoke. Only the best and most expensive is suitable for offering to the gods. dance approaches its climax. Meanwhile, the calf is slaughtered behind the Konaki. To whom? The ancient gods, Zeus, Poseidon? The whalers say to Saint Constantine to beg for his forgiveness. The gushing blood symbolically prepares the dancers for the high point of the celebration. Release. The dancers experience a sensation of cleanliness of the soul. Louder, louder the drums. The dancers groan. Youths and maidens who first danced on the coals last year are almost beside themselves in ecstasy. They will keep the faith and carry the tradition into the future. Now, back to the Kanaki to continue the dance. A French journalist says, one should discuss these dances, describe them. Some see in them reflections of the cult of Dionysius, but I think you have to go back farther to the Mithras cult. Here they're using two basic parts of the rites of Mithras. First, that of crossing the water, then crossing the fire river, that is, the ascent to everlasting life. An Italian visitor comments, it's a terrifically impressive experience. All the people watching want to take part. There's so much confusion. A man from New York says, the impact of this ceremony is enormously powerful, especially for people who uh, uh, have inhibited so much of uh, <clears throat> their inner mind, which these people seem to be able to tap. It's a tremendously impressive thing all the way around. And, uh, shows the tremendous uh, length of uh, continuity of culture because this is undoubtedly a Bacchanalian rite which must be perhaps three or four thousand years old. One of the whalers talks of his son. He always came to the festival and watched. Last year, he started to tremble. He turned pale, jumped into the circle and danced. He'll be taking part from now on. Tradition has it that several centuries ago, barbaric hordes overran northern Thrace. They set fire to all the villages, including Kosti. The peasants fled to the mountains. There, they heard the voice of St. Constantine ordering them to return to their homes to rescue the sacred icons. The churches were still in flames. Despite this, they did get the holy pictures out, and not one person was burned. Ever since, they have danced on fire on St. Constantine's Day in memory of the miracle. Now, young and old compete for the honor of being first to bring wood for the sacred fire. The stack is built a thousand yards from the Kanaki. The wheelers dance because they believe. They dance only for themselves, not for curious spectators. The mayor insists that the fire dance is not meant as a tourist attraction. But still, against the will of the whalers, 10,000 visitors pay 35 cents to the town for the three days of the ritual. 
the ticket price covers the costs of accommodating the visitors. They've come from all over. In the afternoon, two men bring candles, which had burned before the icons at the Konaki. Only these two have the role of starting the fire every year, a privilege that is also handed down from father to son. Even though the Orthodox Church has officially banned the ceremony, there are still the curious who come on their own. And while the flames blaze, the Anastanaria dance on in the Konaki. Now they wait patiently, often hours long. No one knows exactly what time the dance will begin, when the whalers will run onto the coals. The son of the arch Anastanaris races to the dancers with the message, fire. They take the icons with them on the way to the shimmering coals. The dancers believe that Saint Constantine will meet them at the place where three paths cross. Two hours have passed. The flames have died. The coals put out an almost unbearable heat. The first dancer on the fire is the arch Anastanaris. Others follow. The rhythm of the drum and the lyre the groans of the dancers. Together, they remind one of a triumphant hymn, a hymn imploring the protection of the saint against the burns of the fire. They dance and dance on the coals, but their feet stay uninjured.